You're listening to the Wake Up to Freedom podcast. This is episode number 10. Today with me is Miles Beckler. He's an awesome guy, and man, you can learn a lot from him. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Wake Up to Freedom podcast, the show where every week your host, Daniel Carbonell, will share with you the best tools and strategies that will help you finally say goodbye to your job and start living your life with freedom and purpose. Now, welcome your host, Daniel Carbonell. Yes, this is Daniel and welcome to another edition of the Wake Up to Freedom podcast. I am very happy, very grateful that you have decided to join me. Now, before we dive in, I just want to let you know that if you have any questions, of course, or even if you want to be featured on the podcast, I am always happy to help and you can reach me here at helpdesk at wakeuptofreedom.org. That is helpdesk at wakeuptofreedom.org. In the last episode, we talked about teaching yourself anything and starting a freedom business with our guest, Nat Eliasson. And you can listen to that episode at wakeuptofreedom.org forward slash episode 009. It's very recommendable, Nat was fantastic. Today, I have a very, very special guest. I am really excited to have him here with us. I am here with Miles Beckler, the owner and operator of the Miles Beckler YouTube channel and Miles blog, where he's helping people to start an online business. Also, Miles and his wife run a successful niche media company with authority sites in the spirituality and meditation space. With a strong focus and expertise in building marketing funnels that produce leads, customers, and profits, Miles is here to help you understand exactly what it takes for you to start making money online fast. Now, his goal is to be one of the most uh, helpful internet marketers. He, uh, that's why he gives away a lot of content, training, and tutorials for free that most people charge for. Now, Miles Beckler is an entrepreneur, digital marketing influencer, and the master of his own lifestyle. You can find different stuff on his blog, like why most people fail online and the solution and make money online in steps and other useful articles. So let's continue talking about online business with Miles Beckler and his approach on lifestyle business and financial freedom. So you can have or live a lifestyle with more flexibility and more income as well. Miles, welcome to the show. Man. Cheers, Daniel. Thanks for having me, man. We're very happy to have you here. Thank you for uh, making some space on your schedule to be with us tonight. Um, now, Miles, would you please take a few minutes and tell us a little bit more about you, You know, share a little bit of your story, if you could? Sure, yeah. So really, I, I guess I embarked on this entrepreneurial endeavor. Um, my father worked for the same corporation for about 33 years, and he was fired about two years before his full a hundred percent retirement. Um, I saw that as a big change in our world that we or I could never really rely on a corporation for my long-term well-being. You know, seeing how they treated my family and just seeing the, the turnover rate, and they're always willing to bring in someone cheaper. Um, that really forced my hand and made me look at entrepreneurship as my solution to creating essentially the financial well-being um, that I desired. So I went on this long path. I've tried uh, dozens of different business models over the years from, from flipping real estate and houses to a t-shirt company to uh, physical services and, and digital marketing services. And my wife and I really landed on this business model that is um, creating a digital products that we sell. We sell essentially MP3 uh, files is what we sell and video courses. And we now have a membership program where people pay us every single month for what we offer. And they get kind of everything we offer at a, at a one-time kind of low discounted rate. And uh, recently I've started teaching everything I know. So my wife and I, we've been building that business for about nine years. And about a year and a half ago, I started teaching everything I know and everything I've learned in building that business to a very, very successful level. And that's been going on on my YouTube channel and on my blog. And I've been teaching everything for free. Um, and the theory behind that is that you gain a new level of mastery over what you're doing when you teach it. Right, It's one thing to do it, but it's another thing for me to do it and then analyze, okay, why did I do it that way? How did I do it? How do I break this up into steps? How do I teach this to others? 
So it's really gotten me uh, a new level of mastery over all these digital marketing components from Facebook ads and funnels to content marketing, et cetera. Um, and it's helped me share this content with the world. And in just about a year and a half, I've got like something like 55,000 subscribers. And it turns out I, I, I essentially accidentally created a, a whole nother business for us that's um, quite lucrative and fun to operate. And that's pretty much where we are today. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. It's, um, and you do have a big following. Just in YouTube, you have like thousands and thousands of people, over 50,000, maybe like 53,000 subscribers right now. Yep. And growing right around there. Sure, right. And did you say how long ago you started this channel? That was August of 2016. So um, a little over a year and a half ago, I think about 20 months or so. Wow, fantastic. So that means that what you're talking about in your channel, I mean, you know what you're talking about because in I see, I know a lot of people are having YouTube channels for a long time and probably you don't get as much subscribers as you got so far. It's, that's one of my approaches is let me teach you everything through what I'm saying on my YouTube, but also I want people to be able to look at what I'm doing and I want them to see that I'm, uh, the proof is in the pudding, right? That I'm, I'm taking my own medicine. You can actually watch along and analyze what I'm doing and what I'm saying. And out of that, we'll paint the clearest picture of how to grow a business successfully. You know, it's easier your second time, your third time to do it. It just flat out is. So my wife and I, it took us five or six years, I'd say four or five years to really get that momentum going and really get our business firing. Um, this one took me under two years. And the reason is because I've done this before. I knew exactly what to do. And that's what I'm trying to teach is it. I like to, it's not a shortcut, but it is a shortcut, right? I'm trying to teach the quickest path possible, but yet it still takes, I mean, even myself, a full-time internet marketer since 2010, it took me two years to create a massive amount of momentum, a uh, year and a half to create a massive amount of momentum. So it takes time, but um, you know, sticking with one thing for long periods of time is the trick to the game. So there you go. You know, you have a successful internet marketer right there and he's telling you right now that to build his own channel, it took him probably around two years. A successful person, somebody who already knows what he's doing, it takes you two years. So there is a lot of people out there thinking, okay, I want to start my internet marketing and you know, I'm going to do some affiliate products and maybe in a couple of months, I'm going to quit and live in the beach and you know, drink margaritas forever. <laughs> and that's pretty much what they sell you sometimes, you know, those gurus out there. But on your approach with your YouTube channel, also you show real numbers as well. You show, you know, how many subscribers you're getting and right. how many you get from this and that. So that gives you a lot of credibility for sure. Now, Miles, I want to touch on something that you were talking about in your introduction. And when you're talking about your story, you mentioned that your father got, uh, he got fired or laid off two years before his retirement, right? And yep. there is a lot of people that are still thinking about their retirement, you know, social security or the 401k and, and um, good thing that you got to see how life is actually and how you can actually uh, create something for yourself. Um, do you see a big change now in this generation uh, or generational change that a lot of people are realizing that, you know, probably for the baby boomers was more of this, uh, find a good job with benefits and retire when you're 65 and, you know, sit down in your backyard. But yeah. do you see any changes now in the way people are thinking? Yeah. And I think the, the structural and foundational changes come from just how our world has evolved. So we live in the digital age. I grew up, my dad worked in computers. So I'm 36 years old right now. And I don't ever remember a time at my house growing up as a child that I didn't have a computer. My dad always had computers around. He would build them. He would bring them home from work and fix them. So I grew up kind of used to computers. And when the internet first started coming around, I was on, I was maybe 12-ish, uh, right in that range. And I spent an insane amount of time on the internet. So I'm probably one of the older people who can say that they really grew up around full-on computers and internet. But now the next generation behind me, they grew up with smartphones and completely connected online. Because I was like AOL days when you had 200 minutes a month and that's all you had, right? Like these kids growing up now have had had this access to the internet. It's all they know. So I really think that the human experience has changed. Another big change is when my dad was working every day, let's say the 1980s, right? He wakes up at 6 a.m. He goes to work. He comes home from work. He's tired. Those evening hours, he wasn't really able to hustle 
and create value or create a side business. It just wasn't, it wasn't possible because every family around was at home. But today, someone can go to work, they can work their normal job, they can work their nine to five, and when you get home through your cell phone, through your laptop, you have access to the digital economy that is a 24-hour, 365-day per year economy. And you have access to billions of people who are looking for solutions to their problems. They're looking for ways to accomplish their goals. They're looking for fun things, things they're interested in. They're following their passions. They're asking questions to Google and YouTube. You have the ability to be of service to them even if you're spending your time from eight o'clock at night till two in the morning hustling, you can still tap into that global economy. And that wasn't available in the 1980s or the 1970s, right? People conducted business during daylight hours and that's all there was. But now we can conduct business when the time works for us. So you can work your day job, you can get up early, you can put out your content early, you can do your YouTube videos late at night, you can do your search engine optimization and your blog posts at 10, 11, 12, one o'clock at night and they'll live forever and they can connect you to users interested in what you do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, but you have to put in the work, right? It still takes that work, but that's one of the biggest shifts that's happened. And I've really, my wife and I've really, really tapped into that, I think. And that's the biggest change. And that's the, it's available to baby boomers too, right? Like baby boomers can create successful blogs. I know many who have, but I think those millennials and the younger folks who are really keen on the digital age because they grew up in it have potentially a little bit of an advantage there. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. I love the fact that you mentioned that things have changed a lot, you know, um, especially you have created a lot of funnels and, and you know, like uh, systems within your own business. And probably now is easier to build those than probably uh, five, eight years ago. Right. Oh, Where, goodness. Absolutely. Right? Undoubtedly. <laughs> so, um, so right now is very, very much easier to start your own business or create your own business for sure you know you will it will be easier for you to do it today than five years ago but a lot of people might think that they are late on the you know to get into the internet wagon what do you think about those people that think they're late to start a youtube channel which have like a lot of you know users or late to start a podcast or a website right yeah how do you how just do you, they're just wrong. Um, you're not late. It's still early. I think history is going to show, looking back in 10 years, we're going to show that right now in 2018 is still extremely early. The The internet is barely a, I don't even know if it's a teenager yet, right? Like, so we have not reached the maturity of the internet. If you look at the big numbers, the macro numbers, like the percent of money people spend online versus in their physical economies locally, it's still a very, very, very small percentage of money. And I feel like we're going to see more and more levels of evolution. Now, with that said, the big, easy to identify niches are generally speaking saturated, right? Like the, the dating niche. If you're just looking at the dating niche at a blanket level, that's really quite saturated. But what we're in today is the age of sub niches and these really, really small niches that have massive potential. So my wife and my first main business is angel meditations, right? We're not in the meditation space. We don't really teach people how to do meditation. We create angel channeled angel meditations, which is a super specific thing that most people think is weird or they have no idea what it is or they don't care. But there's this little core group of people around our world who absolutely seek them out. They love them. They consume all of them they can find. Bingo, we are of service to that very small audience. And that's the way the world's going to continue to go over the next 10 years is these micro sub niches of people. I think the Minecraft explosion, which was a huge game and it still is a pretty big game around a lot of young kids, huge niche that can be of service to everything from the drones and there's a million little niches available for anyone to go create content and be of service to an audience for. And that's really where we're going. Um, I stepped into the internet marketing space, into the make money online space, which are two very, very competitive spaces. And they've been very competitive for 10 years. You would easily say that I was late to the game on that one. But within under two years, I've created a massive following, a very successful business, 55,000 subscribers. It started with zero. I had zero videos. 
I had zero subscribers. I had zero views. I did 30 videos in 30 days and I had 55 subscribers. I did 30 more videos on the next 30 days and I had 100 subscribers. It was a very slow start, but I stuck with it and I kept on the, the gas pedal, if you will. I stayed on the throttle and um, I've created results through my persistence of effort and my focus on giving more helpful and more valuable content than anyone else in my space. And that has proven to help me stand out. And we need to take these kinds of approaches um, in, in the digital business world. But there is, I think there's more opportunity today. There's still 3 billion people in our world who are not yet online. So not only are there a few billion people online, there's a few billion people who will be coming online in the next 10, 20 years. Um, so the markets are just getting bigger in my personal opinion. Yes, yes, you're right. And I think uh, it was very, very important a uh, subject that you touch is, is the sub niching, right? Because I think the bigger niche, like I don't know, health, relationships, and probably finance, uh, those are big, very broad uh, niches. And of course, you're gonna have find a lot of big fish on on those uh, ponds. But you sometimes go into those sub niches where the little, uh, I don't know, uh, little pieces of gold that you can find, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, it's very, very, very nice. Um, now, Miles, what is the most asked question that you've been asked about online business in general? Oh, the I think the how long does this take? Um, yeah. Or the other one is, um, is this real? Like, can you can you really actually make money online? Like, is it really true that this is possible? Because I feel like so many people have been burned by what I call the fake gurus those overhyped sales letters that say, uh, all you need to do is click your mouse three times and you'll make $10,000 a month starting Tuesday. Um, and that's unfortunately false. And people buy into these uh, ideas and then they go into the courses and it's just not there. Like it, it's, it's not possible and the information that they bought into is lacking. So they get this really kind of um, sour taste in their mouth, right? Like they're just not, they're not sure that it is indeed possible. And it really is. And, and my philosophy is the goal of an internet marketer is to be of service to an audience at scale, right? Like the internet is comprised of people searching on Google and YouTube and podcasts for answers to their problems. So as an internet marketer, we're problem solvers. And that's what I've been focusing on with my YouTube channel is people have the problem of how do I get traffic to my website or how do I convert traffic into sales or how do I run Facebook pay-per-click ads? And what I do is I create the helpful how-to information that explains exactly how to do that which they're seeking for. This is my way of being of service to the audience of people who are searching. And when you take that approach, you become a trusted advisor in the mind of your audience. And when you're there, when you're at that point of being a trusted advisor for your audience, at that point, you have the ability to essentially make money. And whether that's promoting someone else's product as an affiliate, whether that's creating a product of your own through information, through a book, uh, a video course, whether that's selling a service, right? You could do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you could do actual services for people. There's a wide variety of ways to monetize that. But most people don't realize you have to build the trust with your audience first. And everyone's trying to figure out, how can I go get money from the internet? How can I go get money? There's so many people on Facebook. How can I get money from Facebook? And you need to change that conversation around to, how can I go give value to these people? How can I give of myself? And when you align in that way and you give first, the law of reciprocation, whatever you want to call it, reciprocity, like it is sowing and reaping, right? We reap what we sow, um, the law of attraction, whatever you want to call it. It's just the way the world works. That's how humans are wired. We want to uh, support those who help us on our path. So go be helpful to people and then leverage things like YouTube, leverage things like a WordPress blog to get scale behind it because our WordPress blog reaches 5 million people per year right now. And, and we don't, do much more than a couple of blog posts per week. We've just been doing that for 10 years. Wow, that's amazing. And consistency for sure. You know, you're doing it for 10 years on and on and on. So right. you uh, also mentioned hustling. But before I go to the hustling, because I want to talk to you about that for sure, um, you mentioned a change of mindset between uh, going into business to try to get some money, you know, to like, so you can get out because a lot of people, of course, you know, uh, you, 
I mean, I have to understand this. You know, you, you are working the nine to five. You're tired of your job. You want to have your own, you know, your own business on the side. So you start this online business. And what you're trying is to, trying to get some money so you can get out of your job. So you are in this scarcity mindset and you're trying to make money, but you are not out there giving value and, and trying to solve people's problems. So when did you have this uh, change of mindset? Because I think uh, everybody really much talk about this breakthrough, right? When they switch from trying to get to actually give and then pretty much the abundance uh, doors are open for you and, you know, you start getting uh, paid back. Yeah, no, you're, and you're right with the, the scarcity versus the abundance approach. That, that, that's very clear and I, I agree wholeheartedly with that philosophy and that idea and that is what we're talking about. So for me, um, man, I... I made my first money online in 2003, so about 15 years ago, and it was I, I was essentially spamming MySpace in its infancy, um, which it didn't work long term. It completely fell apart, but I got actual checks in the mail, and it made it real. So I had this this kind of aha moment of like, okay, it's possible. But from that moment, from 2003 when I made my first money online until about 2009, so that was six years. I believe I had 15 or more failed projects. So I literally tried 15 or more different ventures, some web-based, some not web-based, most of them web-based, and every one of them failed because I was trying to get. All I was focused on is what's in it for me, how can I get, how can I get. It wasn't until my wife and I co-founded our biggest main website that we're still running today, and my wife was, it was in the spirituality realm, and she's like, I love this stuff. She'd been researching it nonstop. She's like, I'm just going to start to put out content on this. And I told her, if you consistently put out content, I'll help you optimize it. I'll do the keyword research. I'll help you do the search engine optimization. I'll help you grow an email list by adding on the funnels and all that stuff. And she did. And she ran forward full speed ahead, creating content at a very aggressive pace. Many, she did a couple of 90 day challenges where she published one blog post a day for 90 days, um, did that multiple times over and just literally became a prophetic writer through a WordPress blog. And it was in seeing how well that worked through her efforts is when it really clicked for me. And that's when I, that's why I took this approach on my YouTube channel this time and really had success is I'm just giving as much value as I possibly can. And it's really because I learned it from my wife and I knew all the tactics. I knew all the how to, I knew how to do affiliate marketing. I knew how to build a website. I knew all of that. I didn't realize that the magic trick was to give 100% of your heart, your soul, your being to the audience and then align with those things, help them get those things and pay for those things they want um, it, as the monetization on the back end. It, it was literally seeing my wife implement that and, and it kind of evolved. Um, and that's when it clicked. It was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is how a truly long-term successful business that, that you can you know, fill retirement accounts and, and buy real estate and, and live a full lifestyle that, that you want to live, um, an abundant lifestyle. That's where it comes from. Awesome, awesome, Miles. Now, um, let me switch gears a little bit. We you, um, were mentioning about your website with your wife or your wife website, uh, where it's pretty much more about meditation, spirituality, and and in that uh, I don't, uh, subject, let's say, um, there is a lot of people out there thinking that just by visualizing or just by thinking, you know. Uh, about your goals, you just close your eyes, meditate on that, and then those things are going to happen for you. Now, I do believe a lot on on that for sure. You know, I do believe that you have to probably set goals and visualize your future. You know, and, and make it stronger for you. But I do believe that also we are in a physical world uh, affected by time, and and we have to really hustle or or really work for it. You know, like like let's say. Uh, just like you say, the law of reciprocation or or reciprocity. I'm sorry, or um, or probably even uh, karma or uh, uh, cause and effect. Right. Right. Where where are you in in that uh, area? Where do you where do you stand? Well, absolutely, uh, great question, and and 
action is required, right? Like there's no way around it. And I think that's the biggest misinterpretation of a lot of the spiritual laws and the spiritual truths that are in our world. Um, the mystics have been saying it for a long time and quantum physics is even talking about it at this point. So the scientists and the, the mystics and the philosophers and the religious individuals are all saying the same thing. And yes, our thought patterns are creative. Yes, that we need to visualize. You can't hit a target that you haven't defined, right? If you don't know what you're shooting at, there's no way you'll ever hit it. But once you've defined the target, the goal, what you're going after, then it requires massive action in the direction of your goals with a willingness to adapt on the way. That's what truly creates the success. And think about it another way. If you want to generate a business that creates $10,000 per month in income, which is a very common number that people have in their mind, Think about, well, if you earn 50 cents per person that you give value to in their lives. So let's say if I can go give 50 cents of value to enough people, you can make it. You just have to do 50 cents of value to 20,000 people per month and you'll make your $10,000 per month. But that activity, that action of giving value to those people requires action. You can't just sit and meditate and help others right? Like the goal is again, to be of service to the audience. And we got to keep our headspace clear. I meditate every day. I go for multiple hikes in nature every day because it, it gets the, it calms my ego mind and it gets me kind of tuned into my intuition, into my heart of what do I want to share with my audience? But ultimately it's about putting out those videos every day. It's about writing those blog posts every day. It's about sending emails to your list every day. It's about jumping on those opportunities to get on other people's podcasts when they say, Hey Miles, you want to be on my podcast? Absolutely. I'm willing to take my time and energy to give value to your audience because that's in alignment with my goal. What's my goal? My goal is to be the most helpful internet marketer in the world, but I can't just sit on my hands in a, in a room with a candle lit and, and chimes playing and meditate like I'm the most helpful marketer in the world. I'm the most helpful marketer in the world because that's not what the most helpful marketer in the world would do. What would the most helpful marketer in the world do? They would create the most helpful YouTube videos. They would create the most helpful blog posts. They would get a podcast going. They would be on other people's podcasts. They would give of themselves all of the time. So I have to do that. I have to take that action. Zig Ziglar has such a great quote. And it's, um, I believe it's, if you help enough people get what they want in this world, you'll get everything that you want in this world. And you got to remember, it all starts with helping other people get what they want. And that is an active event that takes action, that takes life energy. We're all creators. We're here in the image and the likeness of the creator. We are here to create on this earth. So yes, meditate. Yes, focus on your goals. Yes, visualize your goals, but then create. You have to create things. And when you focus on creating value in the lives of others, magic happens. Awesome. Awesome. Miles. Yes. Um, I like that approach. And Actually, on, it's part of your personal story, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I think that you, I think that you left and then came back to your parents' house or something, and then for six months or something, and you were like really, really hustling, and that yeah. took you out of it, right? Could you yeah. share a little bit of that? Oh, absolutely. So, um, at one point. My wife and I, we were all in on a, a business model that wasn't uh, wasn't what we're operating today. Um, it, it was selling a, a product, like some greeting card products, essentially. And uh, I had sold one of my vehicles for cash to keep putting cash into that business model, following some fake gurus, following some people who didn't have my best intention in mind. Um, ran out of money there, so I sold my wife's car. So that's literally our second car. We had no more cars at that point. Got about $5,000 more to put into that business when all in just, you know, visualizing mental, Oh, this is going to work. This is going to work. I just keep listening to him, keep putting the money and keep going. It's going to work. And, um, literally went flat broke. Like literally I have $50,000 in student loan debts at the time. And I had spent every dollar I had, I had literally sold both of our vehicles. And if there's, I don't think there's a place that's more broke than how broke I hit. I landed on rock bottom. Uh, I was about 30 years old. I had to move back in with my parents. Uh, very, very small house. My dad's retired. He's in the 70s. So it was a very challenging period in my life. But out of that, I, I got disgusted, to be honest. And disgust can actually be a very motivating emotion. Yes. And from that point, from that low point, I call the dark night of the soul from bouncing off of rock bottom, my wife and I were like, never again. Like, we're going to figure this out. And we really shifted into we had kind of dabbled in this little meditation business. It was showing small signs of working and we went all in. We both got 
regular nine to five jobs. I was living a commuter lifestyle at that point because I had to get the money back in, right? I had to borrow money to get a, another vehicle to get a job. And for about six months, I would wake up at five o'clock in the morning and I would work from five o'clock in the morning till about nine o'clock when I had to drive to work. I would listen to audiobooks on my way to work and back, so like positive mindset audiobooks. I would work on lunch breaks and my little breaks from work. I'd be working on my little internet business. And then when I got home at six or seven o'clock, I'd have dinner and go for a quick walk around the neighborhood and then work until about midnight. And we ran, my wife and I were both doing this and we ran like that for about six to eight months straight. And in that time, we were able to bring this website up to the point where it was able to uh, support us. We were able to kind of move on from those jobs. And I started doing... Um, WordPress consulting and WordPress uh, services, client services, because I had learned so many things from all that time and energy I spent building our WordPress site. I was able to apply that to local businesses. And that's really kind of the shift when I went full time. Um, and that's, that's when it stuck. That was about 2010 when that finally clicked. Amazing, my it's amazing. There is definitely something to say about desperation and inspiration, you know, because um, I think that a lot of people when they're in that moment when you know i don't know in the in the worst moment probably is when your best work can 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 come up i think um sometimes you can find another gear um yeah. literally and and history is full of these kinds of stories people when they're down and out uh elon musk at one point with tesla he was he literally had to take the rest of the money he had personal money from his paypal cash out to put into payroll and he, when you lay everything on the line. Sometimes there's a no turning back point. They call it uh, burning the boats, right? There's a story around that. And yeah. yeah, sometimes when your back's against the wall, you come out swinging. It's like that tiger that's cornered, right? That tiger comes back more ferocious than ever when it's pinned up against the wall. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend people get to that point on purpose, but if you're there, if you're feeling like you're there, know that this can be one of the most positive and powerful turning points of your life. If you're able to channel that energy, that emotion into, you know what? I'm going to go be of service to this audience. And amazing things happen when we stop thinking about our BS and our drama and my life and poor me, blah, blah, blah. And we start to focus on other people and we start to focus on helping other people, being of service to other people. Our problems seem to wash away. Like everyone in our world can help somebody. It just feels good to help people. And that creates this positive upward cycle of giving value, helping others. And you will align with your monetary abundance if you stay focused on helping as many people as you can solve the biggest problems that you can. That's amazing, Miles. Thank you so much. Um, now, Miles, you help people change their lives. You know, what is the main reason that people want to do that? Is that usually money or is something else like purpose? They want to look for something bigger in life. What is, the, what is the, one of the main reasons that people want to change their lives, you think? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's phases, to be honest. And I think that the, the money game is usually what, what attracts people to the idea of the internet lifestyle, of creating a, a website and creating income outside of a nine to five job. Um, I think the word freedom is probably the biggest word. People, yes, they want money because they think the money equates to freedom and it can. Um, but I think it's more about the time freedom. I think there's a lot of people with kids that they realize that they're not seeing their kids as much. They spend more time in the office with their coworkers than they do with their four-year-old daughter. And they would love to get more time to spend with their daughter. Um, freedom of location, right? Living in somewhere that, that they're not inspired, that they don't want to be is another reason. Um, so it, it all kind of hinges around this freedom. And I do think that money can be an enabler for people, which is really powerful because when you're making money and you don't have to go to that building for those hours every day and you can control the hours you work, you can make sure that you walk your daughter to school every day. You can be there at the bus stop when she gets off of school every day. You can be coach for your son's little league baseball team. And it's those things in life that are the most important. And money is our enabler to get to that point. And I do think a lot of people are, you know, Lambos and I need a $10,000. Well, I need a Rolex and I need a mansion in this, whatever. Like maybe, okay, I get that, right? Like some people are caught up in the flash of things, but I seem to attract people who want to create a better world. And that usually starts for themselves, their families, their friends. And then once that baseline is covered, 
a lot of times people start to think about their communities, um, about how can they give back to the world? How can they leave a legacy? How can they help create a better world? Um, and I just think it's all steps on a path, right? Because if you are struggling to pay rent, it's really difficult for you to think about how to change the world and make the world a better place when like you got to borrow, like you ain't got money for rent, right? So it's, it's about taking care of those core base human needs for life. And then I love helping people open their mindset because I think every human is here on this earth to do something to help make this world a better place and to help make, help leave this world better than when we all entered it. And I love helping, inspiring people and getting people to the point where they, they're not worried about rent anymore. They're not worried about the bills and the little things. All that seems to have itself covered and they can start to think those more philosophical thoughts and those higher level thoughts of like, what am I here on this earth to do? What, what do I want to leave? What kind of a legacy do I want to leave? Um, so I, I love helping people all across and I, I have people in my audience at different levels of that. And um, I'm honored to, to help people at every phase they're at get to that next phase because it's, it's an amazing path. Awesome, awesome. So Miles, it's, uh, it's like pretty much like help yourself first, get your things together so you can help everybody else, do you think? It is. And the cool part is that when you help yourself first, you do that by helping others, yeah. right? So like if you, I mean, look at a lawn mowing business, right? Like a super simple lawn mowing business, you go out and help other people maintain their lawns for the money that pays your rent. Yeah. Yeah. It is that simple, but you can make a digital version of it. Sure, I teach in a I teach people how to run Facebook ads, right? Like that that works too. I teach them. So I'm helping others. And through my service to others, I get the abundance that pays for me. And then when my bank accounts get to a certain point, I can think more philosophical, more phil philanthropical, uh, yeah. philanthropical. Um, I can think more about philanthropy and, and, and who am I donating to? And I sponsor a couple of kids in Ecuador. I sponsor their, their schooling. Um, I, there's a few, uh, charities in Africa that I sponsor right now, um, that I'm a part of. And I, I love being in a position in my life to start to think those kinds of questions. Um, but it, it still does come. All of my abundance is tied to how much value am I giving my audience? And like I said, my wife and I reach millions and millions of people every year from our website and we're giving little bits of value to millions and millions of people. And that's what creates our abundance that gets us to go to that next level. That's awesome. Very inspiring. Miles. Thank you so much for sharing that, especially if you're helping other people uh, out there. And yeah, of course, Everything comes down to service, I guess. Um, it does. Miles, uh, can, you a, can you give a piece of advice to anyone who's contemplating the idea to start a business online? Let's say with YouTube, start a YouTube channel or a podcast, website. Where do they should be focusing on? That's a great question. Um, so the first thing is to look inside of yourself and find the medium of communication that you're most comfortable with. So my wife started blogging. She loves writing. She's a great writer. And she really likes um, crafting very focused and coherent messages through the written word. It takes her sometimes a few days to write a blog post. But when she's done with it, she knows that it's, it's really clearly communicating that idea in the way she wants. Me, I am terrible at that, to be honest. And I watched my wife's success through blogging and I thought I needed to blog. So from about 2006 or 2007, for almost 10 years, I would try to blog and I'd, I'd jump in, I'd start blogging at milesbeckler.com and, and I just, I wouldn't get things published or I'd judge it too much and I, I just wouldn't enjoy it or I wouldn't publish because it was so difficult for me. But then I tried YouTube videos and YouTube, like the, the act of performing that's in my DNA. I went, I was in drama class as a kid. Like I love performing. <laughs> so aligning with that mechanism and that way of creating content that's in alignment with your DNA is key. So if you're a writer, write. If you're not a writer, don't write, you know, like you chose the podcast because you like talking to people, you like inter interacting, you're good at asking the right kinds of questions. Perfect. You chose the medium for you. And it's one of three, it's written word through WordPress blog, it's talking through a podcast or it's YouTube through kind of a performance style thing. And then once you have decided that this is my medium, do a challenge. I like to recommend people do a minimum of a 90 day challenge and that's 90 blog posts written in 90 days or 90 videos in 90 days or 90 recordings in 90 days. It's a very, very large amount of work, but what's going to happen is two things. 
Uh, more than two things are going to happen. But the main two things that happen are first, you get experience. It's like working out. The first day you go to a gym, it's awkward. You don't know how to balance the weights right. Like it hurts certain muscles. But if you keep going back to that gym for three months straight, you get good at it. You build muscles. It gets easy. So that's the first main key. The second thing is you learn your voice, right? If you look at my early videos, I'm very rigid. Uh, I'm very stiff. I, I, I say um and uh, and I've got all these crutch words and I wasn't a clear communicator at the beginning. But through flexing that muscle over and over and over, I became a very clear communicator. I got very comfortable on camera. And really, I think the biggest trick is just to go. Get started. Nobody sees your first videos. Very, very few people will see your first blog post. That's okay. They'll get better and better. You can always delete them. You can recreate new ones that are updated if you want. Um, but the trick is just to go and realize it's a three to five year process. And commit to the process Choose a niche that you love, something that you're willing to be creating content, researching, and playing in for three to five years, um, and then just put the blinders on and go and know that doing your work is creating and publishing that content every day. Um, now I do three videos a week. I'm not doing every day anymore. Um, that's the big key because that's how you grow your audience. From there, grow an email list would be step two, um, which might be, uh, you know, topic for another podcast in and of itself, but um, grow the audience, grow your email list. And that is effectively enough to grow massive, super valuable businesses. I've seen businesses based on this simple philosophy generate millions of dollars per year. Fantastic, Miles. Thanks so much, man. Um, now, Miles, since you have a couple of businesses online right now, you and your wife, um, could you share with us what is an online tool or piece of software that you that is a must for you that you have to use and why? WordPress. WordPress. Uh, 100%, no question about it, it's WordPress. So WordPress is a content management system. It is essentially like a web building kind of framework. It's open source, which means that you own the code, no one owns you. Um, in order to run WordPress, you need website hosting and you need to get a theme. Um, I like Thrive Themes personally because it allows me to build funnels and it allows me to do my content marketing. And the funnel, if you don't know what that is, is it, a funnel is a series of pages that help turn your audience members and visitors into leads, which is email subscribers, and then turn them into customers. And those are very specific. We call them opt-in pages or squeeze pages or landing pages and sales pages. And you can create really clean versions of that. But then there's also the blog posts, right? And all of that can live neatly and, and works really well on WordPress. Um, I believe 30% of all websites running content management systems online are on WordPress and a crazy number of the biggest companies in the world run on WordPress. So it's the only option out there. Uh, once you get basic WordPress skills, one of the coolest things is you can build your little kind of niche business. Like my wife and I have our little meditation business. We started local businesses in your town would pay very good money for help building them WordPress sites and marketing their WordPress sites and adding content to their WordPress sites. And that's what I did for about four years. Once we started getting a little success with our WordPress site and we started to see the, the success in our meditation business, I was talking about it on Facebook. I was talking about it to friends in my local area. And all of a sudden it was like, hey, my, my cousin's got a little coffee business. Could you help him? And oh, we've got a store over here on Main Street. Could you help us? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And I started selling services for $20, $30, $50 per hour. And um, Learning WordPress is a way to skill yourself up to be able to add value, not just to your little business, but to any business in your area, which just makes you a more valuable person. Um, then you can get more experience, you can get more income that way, and it can actually speed up the process to going full-time on your own. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I really think that WordPress is amazing. Uh, I mean, you have so much flexibility because you can put so many plugins here and there. I remember yep. a few years ago, my first, well, I think that was the first time I, I went into the internet, you know, to start a brand or something, to start a business. I think I uh, searched for a domain and this service that was selling me the domain also served me like the hosting, but it was uh, like a website builder. So it was so limited, you know, I didn't have many options, many ways to do things until I started a WordPress and definitely that gives you 
I don't know, like more flexibility. You can put anything it, it you, want. you can change it, yeah. right? It's awesome. It's awesome. Well, you could build, you could build an e-commerce store. You could yeah. build um, a brochure website, local businesses, real brick and mortar businesses, digital stuff, membership programs. You can create anything with it. So for me, that period I mentioned between 2003 and 2010, when I had about 15 failed projects, a big part of why I failed at so many of those was because WordPress wasn't invented yet. And I was trying to code all of the websites by hand. And the tech behind building a website was so difficult. I never got on to the content creation. I never got into content marketing. It wasn't until my w- wife and I really dialed in on WordPress and it was like, whoa, I just clicked four buttons and built a website. It's not beautiful yet. That was another eight clicks, right? Add on a custom theme and wow, yeah. <laughs> the site looks good. Um, but it makes the tech easy enough that within a day, an afternoon, a couple of afternoons, the tech is done. And then all you have to do is focus on content, 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 because that's the machine, right? That content is you helping your audience and you got to really get focused on that. And WordPress makes everything else easy. And like you said, it's flexible to do anything you want in the future. It's infinitely customizable. Uh, Another cool thing is that there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of developers around the world who know how to work on WordPress and you can find them on fiverr.com or upwork.com for, you know, sometimes 10, 15, $20 an hour to do all of the customizations in the world, uh, which is really powerful. Love that. Love that. Now, uh, now, uh, Miles, what plans do you have for the future? What do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Yeah, man, that's a great question. So really just maintaining what we have going on. My wife and I have created what we call personal brands. My wife is, uh, she's an author. She's a content creator. She's got a membership program. That's all based around her. She loves the audience she's created and who she's being of service to and what she's doing. And then me with this marketing stuff, I'm a marketing geek. I love this stuff. I really do love helping entrepreneurs and helping marketers and, and, really assisting people in growing. I think at some point I'll probably add on some sort of an insider membership, like a VIP program, maybe a a private forum where I help people who want to invest a little bit to get my eyes and and thoughts on their specific platform. But all in all, I'm, I see myself putting out my YouTube videos, my blog posts, and maybe adding on a book or two over the next few years. But I don't see what I'll be doing in five years different as what I'm doing today. Because this is, this is the trick to the game be of service to the audience. And how do I do it? Well, I love making YouTube videos. It's easy for me to make YouTube videos. I love rapping about this WordPress and and blogging and content marketing and digital marketing. So I'm just going to keep doing that. And here's the funny thing. My numbers are going to explode. The biggest change that someone will see if they're watching this in 2023, five years from now, right? They're just going to see, I'm going to have, you know, 1.2 million subscribers. I'll be doing the exact same thing, but my numbers are going to 10, 20, 30, 50 X because it's consistent things done over long periods of time that create massive results. And I want to prove that with my actions. Awesome. Awesome. It's just like working out, you know, you get, you get stronger, bigger, the more you go into the gym after a while. Yeah. Very, very nice. Uh, 100%. Miles. Now, Miles, a couple more questions. I know we're almost sure. out of time. Um, no. Do you have any book? I mean, I'm going to ask you for a book just because I can tell. I haven't even asked you this. Probably we can leave this for another episode. But I know that uh, you're in self-development for sure. You know, you're working out. You're talking about going high. You meditate. Do you, I guess you read. So do you have any book out there that you will strongly recommend our listeners? Yeah, I do. There's one called... Um, Turning Pro um, is a great book, and it's by oh man, what is his Stephen name? Pressfield? Yeah, Love you it. Go. you Love got it, man. Book. Yeah. <laughs> so Turning Pro, he has another one called The War of Art, which is uh, similar and overlapping. But man, that that Turning Pro uh, was like a punch in the face to me, and it it summarizes the process in a beautiful way. Yeah. Um, I, I really think that so one book that's very deeply marketing based is. Um, Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz and it's out of print. So it costs a couple of hundred bucks. So for anyone who's advanced and they're like, yeah, I've been in the game for a while. I'm rocking. They're making, you know, 30, 40 grand a month or 10, 20 grand a month. Um, I really think going through breakthrough advertising is a way to level up the, the marketing that you're doing because marketing is human psychology. Um, Robert Cialdini's books, Influence and Pre- persuasion are both fantastic as well because as you get deeper into marketing you realize that that great marketing is really um 
it's, it's psychology, right? It's, it's, exactly. it's looking at human psychology and emotions drive everything. We think logic runs our life, but it doesn't. Our emotions run our lives. So as a marketer, eventually you need to get to where you can speak to their emotional needs more than the logical needs. Um, but that's kind of optimizing things. And none of that makes sense unless you go through that and, until you turn pro. So yes. turning pro for most people, that, that's the key, key, key to get started is flex that muscle over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, you're right. Uh, with that book, uh, Turning Pro is really like a punch in the face. It's like, you know, you you talk about resistance and, you know, yep. the, how, how probably, probably how to beat procrastination, right? And the shadow career idea. And so I read that and it's a short book, which is great. I read it in an afternoon on the couch and I'm not much of a reader. I listen. Yeah. I like audiobooks more than reading, but that one I read. And when I was done with it, I handed it to my wife and I was like, you have to sit down and read this whole thing right now. And right now. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, I was like, right now. <laughs> What's cool for us is it, it really just gave clarity to what we've been doing. Um, but when you read somebody so eloquently, um, right, and he's a great writer too, which makes it yeah. kind of fun to read and he's got some good stories. But 100%, that is the book for people that I think when you get that and when you apply that, more than just getting it, apply that, um, that is the magic that will grow a business of astounding abundance in any niche. Like, I don't care if you're doing vertical tomato gardening or whether you like drift cars or drones or like whatever it is, horses, horseback riding. Like there's, you know, you could love a specific breed of snake. You could just be a red tail boa constrictor fan. You could make a whole business around that once you understand those ideas. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Miles. Um, I can see we're out of time. Uh, so Miles, would you please, uh, would you please uh, share any final thoughts and your contact information so listeners can learn more? I know you have a seven day free course online. It's like really nice. So would you please share those things with us? Yeah. And the biggest thing I'd like to leave people with is that, that you can do it. I have no special background. Um, my college degree was in university studies, which means I did nothing uh, at, at college, like other than got $50,000 in debt. Um, like my wife and I, neither of us have computer science degrees, nothing, right? So, so this is not something that requires any specific background. Like you can do it. You have to have a passion and something you're willing to dig in and share with a group of people. So ultimately, I just like encouraging people to try. Um, to find me, I'm Miles Beckler is my name. I'm the only Miles Beckler on the planet, which makes me really easy to find. I put out most of my content on YouTube. So that's probably the, the first place to go, especially if you like the videos. I have a lot of blog posts on milesbeckler.com and you'll see a pop up in the free course. There's a link up top. You won't be able to avoid, you, you won't, you'll find my free course that he mentioned. Um, and that's my full philosophy seven. It's essentially seven steps, how we took our side hustle to over a million dollar business. Um, and if you like listening to podcasts, you can just search for miles Beckler in the podcast uh, directory. A lot of my videos have been ripped into mp3 and put on the podcast so you can listen to them while you're doing other things like uh, at the gym on the treadmill walking a dog or commuting uh, so you can still kind of get these ideas um and that's it anything you got just hit me in the comments and youtube or wherever you find me comments on my blog i'm happy to answer questions when i can but uh, i like to just really help people realize they can do it i've seen it i've got hundreds of friends who have created you know combined tens upon tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars in income being of service to very interesting, obscure, what seem like very small niches. Um, and it works over and over and over when you follow the process. Awesome. Awesome. Miles, thank you so much for inspiring, for inspiring us today with your personal story, your generosity and sharing your thoughts and ideas. I really believe that listening to someone with such amount of experience and knowledge about this topic is invaluable. So thank you so much for being here today, Miles. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. Also, keep in mind that if there is anything that we mentioned today that you missed, we take all of the show notes for you and you can find them for this episode at wakeuptofreedom.org forward slash episode 010. And a final reminder that if you like to be alerted each week um, to new episodes, I invite you to subscribe at the Wake Up to Freedom podcast. Just go to wakeuptofreedom.org forward slash subscribe. And I also have a very special free guide that I have created for you that will help you to avoid the five uh, biggest mistakes online entrepreneurs make and fast track your way to success that for a very limited time I'm offering for feel free to grab your copy right now at wakeuptofreedom.org. That's all for today. 
Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the interview. Talk to you soon. Ciao. You've been listening to the Wake Up to Freedom podcast with Daniel Carbonell. To download special bonus content, access to the show notes, and more, make sure to visit wakeuptofreedom.org. That's wakeuptofreedom.org.